Graduated, elevated. Now it's my time to shine. Yeah, let's go. Major moves, power moves. Hello, Tikani Lewis Kaza, and welcome to PhD Hard Talk. I am your host, Nomum Guni. Could you please introduce your research, who you are, and what you're about? Thank you, Noma. Uh, thank you for having me on the PhD Hard Talk. Uh, basically, my name is Tikani Lewis Kaza. Um, was born in Soweto Township in South Africa. Uh, my research is about um, developing a model for the prevention of workplace violence towards public sector emergency care providers in Gauteng. Um, why this topic? I guess this is a topic that has been close to my heart and uh, it, it's, it's meant to develop a change, but the change is based on the current challenges, especially in an environment or communities that are similar to the one that I was born and raised in. Um, yeah. Hmm. No, that's interesting. I think there's three bullet points that I like um, that I would love to explore. So let's start with, OK, you're from Soweto and you're saying that you're investigating the current situ based on what I've read you've defined it as workplace violence for your research what does workplace violence mean because I know that violence can mean different things for different people so what does it mean for your research specifically coming from so oh. so -to? um okay there's I, I can see a textbook definition and a definition of what I found as I was exploring all the literature. Uh, basically, workplace violence, or let me define violence, and then I'll define workplace, and then we'll put it together. So violence is anything that makes you feel uncomfortable. Whether I say something to you verbally, that makes you feel uncomfortable, whether I'm intimidating you, whether I'm touching you inappropriately, whether I'm inflicting pain. So uh, anything that inflicts emotional, physical, any type of pain is violence. You know? uh, it doesn't have to be physical, but it's also emotional. So um, as I said, um, we include things like what I say to you, if if I should say uh, some words that would break your heart or would make you feel uncomfortable, it's a form of violence. If I should make a comment that makes you feel uncomfortable, that is also violence. If I should touch you inappropriately with or without your consent, it is still violent. It is still violence. And then I'll, I'll dwell into workplace. So workplace is where we work. Um, it can be your place of work, whether you work in an office, or it can be your place of work if you work from home. However, the technicality between violent, uh, between workplace is the fact that if, for example, you are working in an office or you are working in a construction site, for argument's sake, or uh, you, you're working in different sites every day, if you commute to work, you are still at work. So, for example, if you leave your house and wait for a taxi, or if you leave your house and drive to work, the minute you start your journey to work is work. And the minute you get back from work, the minute you enter your house is still work. So, any violence that happens from the minute you leave your house, to commute to work when you're at work and when you commute back to home is workplace. So for the purpose of the research, workplace is just what I'd explained and then violence is the rest of what I've explained previously to when I explained workplace. Okay, um, so me and money were best friends at times. So I'm just thinking, you just said driving to work. 
Yes. <laughs> you know. <laughs> so, yeah. I'll, I'll tell you why, but please ask the question. <laughs> Does that mean that those who are driving to work, specifically, yeah. in, yeah. as, as you pronounced it, Gauteng province, get paid when they're driving to work and driving from work? Because you've just said that's their workplace. So I'm thinking yeah. narrow. <laughs> Yeah. No, I, 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 I guess I, I anticipated that question, but I'll answer you. Um, say, for example, you wear a uniform to work. So say, for example, you are a police officer and you have to commute to work. Mm -hmm. So um, for the fact that you, you wear your uniform when you leave your home, um, if you see a crime being committed, you are automatically uh, obliged to act as part of your, your 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 code of profession or as part of your 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 um how how can i put it your your code of conduct and your, your scope of work you you are obliged to act so uh if we look at we, we're speaking about emergency care providers so the layman term that people use is is paramedic and uh, the reason why i i omitted using the word paramedic is that it has a certain definition as per the health professions council so we cannot use it as an umbrella term you know but colloquially it's it's acceptable to to use it so i'll, I'll use it just to say a paramedic leaves his home or her home wearing uniform and they are obliged to act should they see someone being injured or ill or something should they see an emergency on their way to work they are obliged to act you know so uh th that is why we have something called the good samaritan law which uh as a lay person who's not registered as an emergency care provider you'd be helping as a good Samaritan. So you can do whatever you want, but you will not be legally liable for whatever should happen as per your action. However, a paramedic or an emergency care provider would then be required to practice in his or her scope or his or her uh, clinical practice practice guidelines or scope of practice or the level at which they are trained to even though they are only assisting as a good Samaritan hence now it is safe to say work is when you leave home wearing that uniform and what that uniform represents in society okay so I'm thinking <laughs> I'll do yes. a disclaimer first. So we have to be conscious that this is specific to South Africa and also specific to the Gauteng province, this research that is. So if your contract, your terms and conditions are for somewhere else, please do read and ensure that you are aware of what you can do and can't do when you're inside work and outside of work and also within your working hours and when traveling in because in Europe you will get sued if something goes bad. So just in case, disclaimer, done. So going back then to the definition that you've used, um, which is emergency medical services. So you've explained why you chose this words, well, two words specifically. And I'm just trying to understand for your research, what does emergency medical services mean? Well, it's three words. What does that mean for your research? Because if we look at it from a global perspective, it may have different definitions. So for your research, what does it mean for the Gauteng province? When we speak about emergency medical services, we speak about the, the employer. So uh, the, the setting of the employer. So it's it's basically a a definition that that helps us to understand um, the confines of the employer. So uh, 
for example, an emergency care provider would be employed by an emergency medical service, which is the provider, the umbrella provider of this particular service, which is being provided, which is then called emergency medical care. So the product would be emergency medical care. The, the umbrella body or the provider would then be emergency medical services. And the individual providing this, the skilled individual would then be an emergency care provider. Okay, so now I'm thinking yeah. specifically in Kauten, is this a norm that we just become violent casually <laughs> for you to want to conduct this research? Was it a <laughs> pandemic? <laughs> uh, it a thank you. For, no, thank you for, for the question. It's, it's, it's quite, you, you know, the more I, I, I did the research, the, the more I, I, I got shocked. So, in in essence, I, I guess uh, we, we are a violent society. I, I guess that is what we, we need to accept, that uh, we are basically violent. Whether we use it to solve our differences or for whatever reason, but we are a violent society where there is widespread violence. So it, it's not only violence towards emergency care providers. However, it's, it's violence towards everyone else. I, I guess if someone would have to do research on other victims of violence, you would then find that there is just widespread violence. So that has been expressed in findings that, uh, that, that there is a high crime rate so this was corroborated by the community members and corroborated by the, the police and the emergency care providers. Uh, however, uh, research also shows that there is a lot of violence, a lot of contact crimes, a lot of robberies, a lot of uh, sexual uh, uh, assaults, and uh, there is just widespread violence. And uh, yes, we are violent. Okay. That's how I Yeah. So I've got a question. You've yes. realised that we're a violent society. Now, yeah. is the violence towards women or LGBTQ? I have to count it out to make sure I've got it right. Or <laughs> towards women of a certain age. What is it? What were your findings? Um, okay, on, on, on my findings, I, I didn't really corroborate or split apart uh, women by age, nor did I split apart uh, people or community members based on their sexual orientation or how they would like to identify. But I, I found that uh, being a female, emergency care provider in low to middle income communities. So uh, the reason why I mentioned that I'm from Soweto and it, it touched me because um, it's, it's where I come from is, is that the research clearly showed that this violence is more common in low to middle income communities. So being a woman in a low to middle income community places you at a high risk of violence or sexual violence, uh, particularly at night, in the dark of night. And um, the reason is that you are being seen as a easy target. Mm. So, I have a question before you finalize. You've just said you didn't look at the groups, you weren't specific, but I'm now thinking, why is that? Knowing that, you know, that would improve the quality of your data or maybe give you a different perspective to understand the age groups. Because I'm thinking, and I would say a go-go, 
an older lady. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> would would they be um, seen, you know, to be attacked at night? And, you know, at, at, just for the audience, someone who is of older age, <laughs> maybe from 50 going upwards, would they yeah. be attacked? Wouldn't that be important for your research? Um, it, it, it would be. However, um, it, I guess there's, there's more opportunity for, for further research. Maybe, maybe I might look that as part of my postdoctoral studies. But uh, this is what, what I, I, I was, my angle of approach. So basically, um, I, I needed three perspectives. So I, I found that there's three, three affected parties. So one party would have been the community. So the second party was the law enforcers. And the third party was the emergency care providers. So now when we look at the community, uh, the community, I, I had like um, an inclusion and exclusion criteria. So one of the main points within my inclusion and exclusion criteria was the fact that do you have access to medical aid? So um, the reason why I asked that particular question was the fact that if you do have access to medical aid, then you won't be dependent on state-funded health care. So public sector emergency care providers wouldn't be your first line of um, seeking emergency medical care in an emergency. You then seek private funded health care. Now, the reason is that South Africa has a two-tiered health care system. So there are people who can afford private healthcare and those who cannot afford. Now, those who cannot afford therefore use public sector emergency care. And then the other thing was that uh, from looking at that part, then I, I looked at responses. So the statistician and I uh, looked at a number that which number would make the, 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 the statistics to be valid. You know, and then we then disseminated. So, uh, with regards to the community, we, we weren't exactly looking at uh, any specific gender or, or age. We just were looking at did you ever use uh, the service? Uh, do you not have medical aid? And then, as the numbers came, I guess. Yeah, we then had things like age. We, we tried to corroborate certain um, variables that we found, but we were more focused on the fact that, okay, a lot of people are staying in those low to middle income communities. Mm -hmm. um, we also found that a lot of them are black, and we also found that a lot of them are poor. Some of them are employed, but it's a, it's, a, it's a little number. And then when we looked at things like statistics and uh, like census data, we then found that, yes, our findings do corroborate that of the census data, that uh, around 75% uh, of the entire population of Gauteng doesn't have uh, private medical aid. So they are dependent on this uh, public sector emergency care providers. So uh, from there, then we found that we're not really making them out for their sexual orientation. But then interestingly enough, when we look at the, 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 the emergency care provider cohort, mm -hmm. we, we, we also didn't ask for a gender balance or we didn't look at a quota for the gender. We just looked at, are you interested? Do you consent to participate? Do you meet the inclusion and exclusion criteria? And then we took them in. But we, we did find that when you speak to a male, he speaks a different thing or has different challenges to that of females, you know? 
And interestingly enough, um, I, I also don't know the participants' sexual orientation, but um, I just took it, okay, you are a male, you are a female. But interestingly enough, whether there are any LGBTI male Q. Or, yeah, but QI, but um, none of the males reported any sexual harassment. So no. now let me ask you, as we're having this interaction, you're saying there's a limitation. You didn't ask, but you could tell from the responses, yes. right? Yes. So, you know, hindsight is a beautiful thing. That's why we love research. So yeah. now if we look at the age groups, for example, I mean, I've, I've done a bit of digging in terms of rape cases um, for, for young women specifically from the age of 16 going to 24. The numbers are really high, um, just based on what I found on the internet. So I'm presuming and assuming, I didn't do this research, that, you know, based on your responses as well, if you had staggered the age groups, you would have been able to identify a trend. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, <continue>. yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there, there is. I, I guess I some of it I, I didn't note it down because I, I was actually uh, achieving my objectives. You know, and, and hence I'm saying um, there is an opportunity for further research. But I, I, I did find that um, the younger women were the ones reporting these cases of sexual harassment. I, I don't want to also say um, how they look or what they wear or whether they do their hair in a specific way, but there was this form of sexual harassment to a female that was more younger than a female who was older, uh, especially amongst the emergency care provider cohort. Because we've realized that we're a violent society. Is there more work for the government? We need to find out why are those communities predominantly black? Now <laughs>